What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now let's get into it. Hamzat ready for next opponent after punishing fight with Gilbert Burns. Perhaps the most highly anticipated fight for the UFC 273 card this weekend was the Hamzat Chimaev Gilbert Burns fight. The boys delivered and then some. For 15 grueling minutes, the two were engaged in fiery exchanges, hard punches, plenty of scrambles. But when all was said and done, Hamzat was crowned the winner by unanimous decision. This win pushes Hamzat to 11-0 on his career, 5-0 in the UFC, but it does end his career-long streak of finishes. This was also the first time we saw Hamzat enter the third round as well, and he was still throwing power shots late into the fight, despite clear signs of fatigue. Burns, meanwhile, was able to get his licks in throughout the fight, but the judges sided with the Chechen Swede for this one. Hamzad gave a ton of credit to Burns for giving him his toughest test to date. During the post-fight interview in the cage, Hamzad said he didn't know Burns was so tough, and he made him work incredibly hard. As for what's next, this is what Chemayev had to say about that after the fight. I don't care. I said everybody. I fight everybody. I don't like this, you know, they, the guys said, oh, he's number two, and uh, Hamzad is number 11. Uh, the fight is like, you know, was like nothing good for Gilbert. Who cares about that? You know, like, we ever want to fight each other, make money, you know? We fight for our family, so I don't care who I fight. If I get money, I get my 50 Gs and knock somebody out, I'm happy. For weeks leading up to this bout, this fight was thought to be a title shot eliminator. But just a few days ago, UFC President Dana White told Pat McAfee in an interview that if Hamzat were to win his UFC 273 bout over the number 5 welterweight in Burns, he would be matched up against the number 1 ranked welterweight, Colby Covington, next. Chaos bounced back from his loss to the welterweight champion last November, with a dominant decision victory over Jorge Masvidal at UFC 272 last month. Meanwhile, the welterweight title shot picture is going to get a little bit more clear over the next few weeks, with number 5 Bilal Muhammad taking on number 4 Vicente Luque in next Saturday's Fight Night main event. Then you have welterweight champion Kamaru Usman slated to defend his title against number 3 ranked Leon Edwards later this year, with an official date for that fight expected to be announced soon. What did you think about the fight? And what are your thoughts on what's next for Hamzat? Also, what did Hamzat prove to everyone on Saturday night? UFC Singapore to host Joanna Janjacek vs Zhang Wei Li rematch. The 2020 Fight of the Year Part 2 is now expected to take place at UFC 275 this coming June. Both Joanna Janjacek and Zhang Wei Li are said to have agreed to terms for the rematch according to ESPN. The fight would be the return of Joanna, who had not entered the octagon since she last met Wei Li at UFC 248 in March of 2020 in their infamous five round war. Wei Li won that fight by a split decision after an intense 25 minutes. Joanna has repeatedly stated she only wanted big fights upon her return and certainly expressed interest in the rematch against the Chinese fighter. After the UFC 248 fight, Wei Li went on to drop the women's strawweight title after getting knocked out by Rose Namajunas at UFC 261 in April of last year. Wei Li later lost the rematch by a split decision at UFC 268. Wei Li is currently still ranked number one in the division, while Joanna, a former champion, will be able to get back in the rankings with a rematch against Wei Li. The UFC 275 pay-per-view will take place in the Southeast Asian city-state of Singapore, which will also include two title fights. Valentina Shevchenko will defend her women's flyweight title against Taylor Santos, while Glover Teixeira will defend his light heavyweight title against Jiri Prochaska. The card will also include Robert Whittaker versus Marvin Vittori in the middleweight clash. Are you excited to see Yuana versus Wei Li too? And who's your early favorite going into this fight? Also, give us your predictions for the other fights on the UFC 275 card in the comments below. TJ Dillashaw looks to return in September. The last time we saw TJ Dillashaw in the cage, he had been making his return from a two-year PED suspension. Last July, he beat Corey Sanhagen in a tough five-round battle, but he took away the split decision in that one. But Dillashaw badly hurt his knees during the fight and required surgery before he could make his return. Ultimately, the injury sidelined him for several months. Still, the former champion is the number two ranked bantamweight and was called out following the UFC 273 co-main event this weekend. During UFC 273, Dillashaw gave an update on his injury and stated that he's likely the next contender for the title. However, this is what he said when someone asked when he could potentially return to the cage. 
yeah, I'll be ready when these guys are ready to fight again. You know, as, I mean, as everyone comes out of that cage healthy. Um, you know, I, you always can kind of do the math of when someone's going to fight again, you know, so I think you know, September, October would be perfect for me anyways. Aljamain Sterling ultimately came out on top against Peter Yan for the undisputed UFC bantamweight title, turning in a grueling performance against the favorite in Yan. Still, after Saturday's co-main event, Sterling called for a fight against Dillashaw next. What do you think about a potential bantamweight title fight between Dillashaw and Sterling? Who do you think wins that fight? Don't forget to take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest fight news. Henry Cejudo says there's no way Tom Aspinall will ever beat John Jones. The hype behind Tom Aspinall is getting bigger and bigger, and with former light heavyweight champion and MMA GOAT John Jones still looking for an opponent for his heavyweight debut, some of the armchair matchmakers out on the internet say, what about Jones fighting Tom Aspinall? To which Henry Cejudo is now scoffing at. Triple C, a former champ champ and Olympic gold medalist, is now retired and coaching high-level UFC fighters at Fight Ready in Arizona. One of those fighters is Jones, who has no doubt improved his wrestling working with Cejudo. Jones has been downright dominant throughout his career with incredible precision skills, power, and size. It's a deadly combination that he is now looking to take to the heavyweight division to take on some other legends, including the likes of Stipe Miocic. But while Jones hasn't fought in two years, Cejudo says Jones is still incredibly dangerous, no matter what. This is what he said about that in a recent episode of the Triple C and Schmo show on YouTube. You know, so I think, uh, you know, there's a, there's, there's a lot of great talent out here. I know, I know, I know Darren Till brought, brought up uh, uh, Absino. Tommy Absino. They ain't nobody in the, they ain't nobody in the heavyweight division that's really going to touch him, man. I really don't. Not even, the, the only guy that really has a chance to beat Jones is Francis Ngannou with knockout power. What do you think about Cejudo's thoughts here? Islam Makachev, né? O Islam, vamos lá, fez uma luta com o Bob Green, venceu, daí teve toda essa luta, não luta com o dos Anjos, parece que tomou ali um, um puxão de orelha do Dana White, ah, ele tava super confiante que ele seria o próximo da fila e por causa dessa história parece que já não vai ser, vai ter que lutar com o Darius. É... Como é que você vê o Islam como lutador e como personagem, né? O que, que ele acrescenta nessa divisão? O cara que vem com 10 vitórias seguidas, mas ainda não pegou nenhum top 5. O cara é muito consciente, sempre na dele ali, né? Vem pedindo muito essa disputa de cinturão, só que eu acho o seguinte, né? É... Acho que ele tem que pegar uns caras que estão ali na frente, top 5, né? Pra poder ter uma disputa de cinturão. É... São 10 vitórias seguidas, mas nunca lutou com um cara ranqueado, nunca lutou com um cara que esteja nos tops ali. Então, com certeza, tem que fazer uma ou duas lutas pra fazer isso acontecer. Ah, pô, são 10 vitórias, beleza, mas não pegou ninguém ranqueado. Era isso que eu escutava gigantescamente. Quando eu pedi muito a minha oportunidade pelo cinturão, foi isso que eu escutei. Então, acho que é isso que ele deve escutar, é isso que ele deve fazer. Pegar um cara que esteja ali na minha frente, na frente ali, pra poder fazer acontecer. Mas eu acho que o Isla é... tem que fazer, sim, uma ou duas lutas. Eu acho que a luta contra o Darius é uma luta perfeita dele fazer. E ele vencendo o Darius, com certeza, deve pegar mais um cara que esteja ali na frente. Francis Ngannou on Dana White not wrapping the belt around him following UFC 270 title defense victory. Francis Ngannou is now recovering from serious knee surgery, months after his big UFC 270 win over former teammate Cyril Gan this past January. The fight was significant for many reasons, not least of which was the fact that the Cameroon native was fighting against his former teammate coached by his ex-trainer, but also a looming contract dispute with the UFC on top of a knee injury that he suffered just before the fight. Despite it all, Ngannou came out on top against Gan, showing a more well-rounded skill set by dominating the grappling exchanges, as well as his incredible conditioning. So that's perhaps why he never cared whether or not UFC President Dana White wrapped the title around his waist following the fight, as UFC matchmaker Mick Maynard did it instead. In a recent interview on the PBD podcast, this is what he said about that night. Personally, I didn't care. I made my statement that night. I was happy, and I don't know if that's true or not. Ngannou goes on to say that he was happy that Mick Maynard got to wrap the belt around him and that he's a friend. Still, White has refuted claims that he was angry over Ngannou's win and stated that his absence from the post-fight festivities and press conference was due to a behind-the-scenes incident. Still, what do you think of Ngannou's statements here? Thanks so much for joining us today. What do you make of what's going on in the fight world? Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the latest news from the MMA Zone. See you next time.